Hi, welcome back uh, to my channel. Uh, this episode is the continuation of the previous one, uh, uh, episode number 62, where I started uh, looking at a low-cost configuration to use um, the HRF as an HF uh, transmitter. And a key component of this uh, configuration is uh, the filters, uh, the low-pass filter and uh, the band-pass filter from uh, QRP Labs. Okay, so in this video I want to talk uh, about, uh, about these uh, and uh, starting from the observation that they are extremely cheap, okay, around uh, five uh, dollars each. Uh, okay, so the filters, I, I built them. This is uh, the uh, low pass filter. So let me uh, show it to you a bit more closely. And uh, the filter, as, as you can see, is extremely, is extremely small and uh, so it's very small it is designed to go inside um, a cw transmitter that qrp labs uh, sells uh, as a kit okay um, keep in mind that i have added these um, sma connectors that are not part of the kit so what you actually build is just this very little board it's a very simple board uh, it's made of um, three uh, toroidal inductors and you have to do the winding by yourself and four capacitors so it's a seven element uh, low pass filter and um, yeah the manual is very very clear about how to proceed here you have the schematics and uh, in general you know you have the the board layout uh, all the informations about the capacitor and inductors uh, with all the tables here i built the um, the 20 meter model okay so you have all the information about the values of each capacitors each inductors how many turns uh, to do and this type of things and i have to say that the the building this uh, this low pass filter has been extremely simple so i'm not an expert at all in soldering i'm not a master on soldering at all i used as you can see this very cheap uh, like 10 euros or or stuff like that um, soldering iron so you really don't need anything special to to do this uh, low pass filter and here you have uh, the um, high pass filter uh, sorry the band pass filter and the band pass filter is of similar size uh, it is slightly more difficult to build in my opinion and this is because these uh, uh, inductors are so there are two threads here, two wires, because this acts as a transformer and this as well. And so there are some tricky connections to make in a very little space. So nothing impossible really, but uh, you know, it takes a little bit more time or care or ability, I think, to build uh, the band pass filter compared to the low pass filter. Anyway, they are, as you can see, of very similar sizes, basically the same. And here I didn't mount it on, uh, you know, SM uh, connectors. It is uh, the kit uh, uh, comes with these pins that you can solder directly to, to the board. And this as well, by the way, I just for the moment, I prefer to connect the SMA adapters because it's, use, it's easier for me to do testing uh, with uh, these connectors. Um, something to be noted, uh, this low pass filter is rated according to specification at at least uh, 10 watts. Uh, instead, uh, this uh, bandpass filter is uh, rated uh, much less, and the reason is uh, that here we have a transformer, and so the signal comes with a certain voltage, but uh, in, the, uh, in the middle of uh, the circuit, the voltage will be amplified due to the transformer, okay? So you cannot uh, put too much power here, or you will damage the capacitors, basically. Uh, so this is recommended either as a filter for an input, so when you receive a signal from the antenna, or uh, as a filter for very early stage uh, transmission, so like uh, zero dBm or stuff like that, okay? So this is not to be used uh, as a final, uh, you know, uh, filter for transmission. And uh, that's it. So this is about uh, the construction. Uh, I have nothing more specific to say. I mean, I, the, the construction of this took me around uh, one hour or so, consider that it was the, the first time and I read the entire manual because I wanted, uh, you know, to read everything. And this perhaps uh, another hour, you know, perhaps slightly more due to the soldering 
complication here in the very low amount of space but again in this uh, hour or so i read all the manual and this one is of about uh, 10 pages anyway this is extremely well written and the instruction uh, for the toroids are just uh, are just perfect in my opinion so yeah uh, good value for uh, for as a kit at least for um, these um, filters for five euros each and now i'm going to test uh, them uh, with the spectrum analyzer to to see if they perform uh, well electrically speaking Okay, so I will start uh, checking uh, uh, the low pass filter. Uh, so I've connected, I'm going to use my spectrum analyzer. Um, by the way, I could uh, equally well use uh, my nano DNA. Uh, this is perfect uh, for the task. I'm using the, the spectrum analyzer simply because it's uh, kind of uh, more nicer to use a little bit and also because I can show it uh, to you on the video in an easier way like that. Okay. So as you can see at the moment, uh, uh, the spectrum analyzer is configured to sweep from 1 MHz to uh, 30 MHz. And uh, the top line it has 0 dBm and we have a 10 dB uh, per um, uh, line segment here, per division. Uh, I have connected a low pass filter. So here it's receiving the signal from the tracking generator. And uh, here the output of the low pass filter is going into the input of the spectrum analyzer. So now I'm going to start the tracking generator with a strength of uh, minus uh, 10 dBm. And so uh, basically it will produce a flat uh, signal where this line is, okay, minus 10. And so let's see, let's see what happens. Let me activate the tracking generator on. And so let me de de disable the line uh, so we have a clear way. So as you can see here, uh, we have uh, the, behavior, the expected behavior of a low pass filter, uh, all frequencies up to, um, well, basically the cutoff point is here. And I'm not sure if you can see, but it says 14.41 uh, uh, megahertz, just right on top there. And so, yeah, this is absolutely perfect. And then, uh, by the time we reach uh, 30 megahertz, or let's see the second harmonics at 28 uh, megahertz, it's about here, we are how much? More than 60 dB down. So this is uh, working very, very well. And I'm really surprised actually that it works uh, so well since, uh, you know, winding uh, the toroids, the, the inductors by yourself does not instill so much confidence, but the outcome is uh, extremely nice. Um, by the way, we're in the pass band, uh, so uh, before 40 megahertz, we are basically on the 10 dB uh, line, so there, there is no losses. And then uh, we are going down. So let's see what happens at higher frequency. So I'm going to set a stop frequency at, let's say, 500 megahertz. And so, yeah, the, the filter stays uh, very good uh, at uh, higher frequencies as well. Here we get some signal. Yeah, this is probably the FM radio. I'm getting some signals just because this is at the moment not shielded, okay? But once I will put this on a, on a, on a case, a metallic case, I expect to get no, none of this. So yeah, I'm, I'm extremely happy about uh, this uh, low pass filter. Uh, so let me also check uh, with uh, uh, the nano DNA its uh, impedance. So basically it's perform. So of course uh, this is designed to have a 50 ohm impedance. So I'm going to connect a 50 ohm uh, a dummy load on one side and then an adapter here to connect to uh, the nano DNA and then I'm connecting it to the nano DNA. So I'm gonna be able to have a look at, it, at its behavior and there it is. So we see both the Smith chart and uh, the SWR so here the marker is at 14.2 uh, megahertz. So as you can see, the SWR is very, very low and it starts going up when, uh, you know, the filter rejects basically. So this is uh, the point. And similarly, the Smith chart is very, very close to the 50 ohm at low frequencies. And once we reach uh, 14 megahertz, here it says, uh, so let me see if I can zoom. Oh, it would be interesting to show this to you. Uh, possibly no anyway it says a 49.9 uh, 
I'm sorry this camera is not the best but at the moment I have four set 14 megahertz and I'm getting uh, over there uh, unfortunately it's not visible but 49 point maybe anyway it's 49.9 uh, ohm so absolutely perfect and uh, so the low pass filter works uh, fantastically well so for five dollars uh, this is a great uh, investment okay so now i'm going to test uh, the uh, band pass filter so for this uh, as i said i didn't uh, solder sma adapters so i'm basically being this bnc cable that has uh, some uh, cables at the end uh, and uh, some uh, adapters here as well from basically pins that go into an sma connector so um, for this reason now again the spectrum analyzer is set from 1 to 30 megahertz we are getting some signals okay again this is because this is not shielded so it's picking up something due to these cables and and stuff but it's not a, a by itself a problem of um, of the filters so I, again let me activate the tracking generator so we can see what, what happens uh, on okay so as you can see we get uh, the expected behavior of uh, bandpass filter uh, low frequencies are rejected we start to accept here at 13.8 uh, and it's very flat here up to uh, basically 14.8 and then we are going down again so again this is a uh, perfect uh, perfect really uh, the band pass is, uh, I mean, the, the bandwidth of the pass area is, again, from 13.8 to 14.8 is about 1 megahertz. And, um, yeah, something I want to say here is that uh, here, um, uh, just after I finished uh, building it, uh, the band pass was at something like uh, 13. And, in fact, you're supposed to to uh, regulate uh, mm, the variable capacitors here until you get uh, to the value that you like. Let me just do an example for you. I'm going to turn a little bit this capacitor and as you can see I get immediately an effect. So by just playing a little bit uh, you get, uh, you basically get what you want. All right, so I think I'm happy like this. Uh. And another observation is that uh, the signal that we are uh, reading now on the, so let me zoom in a little bit actually it's right um, so so here we can see some more details and the point is that the signal we are getting is not uh, exactly the 10 dBm that we are getting out of uh, I mean we are getting at the input of uh, the filter it's a little bit more it's a uh, minus 11.78 uh, as you can see up there and so there is a loss it's about a slightly less than 2 db loss uh, and this is uh, uh, expected so it's part of uh, the specification let me see if i can find this uh, um, so yeah the insertion loss uh, uh, you know here i can find the data of the insertion loss this is for 40 meters but anyway uh similar it's about uh, so for 12, 12 meters the bandwidth is higher but you get less losses uh, the way we go uh, up in a uh, wavelength we get less bandwidth and uh, a bit more losses and yeah i'm on the 20 meters band and i'm getting as you can see one megahertz uh, uh, something between uh, uh, 12 and 40 and uh, about 1.5 uh, losses um, which is which is very good uh, in my opinion so I'm very happy and uh, so yeah uh, last thing I want to do is uh, uh, let me think if it is possible okay I found them so basically I've connected uh, uh, my nano VNA the nano VNA is going through this cable to the filter and the filter is terminated with a 50 ohm uh, load and as you can see here we get uh, that the SWR is particularly low, close to this. Uh, at the moment, we are at 40 megahertz. If you can see, it says 57 ohm, which is kind of okay. We can get lower, I guess, if we go. Well, now now it says 41 ohm, uh, but at 14.0, uh, 
uh, yeah, I'm reading now 57 ohm. Anyway, this is the impedance I'm measuring. And of course, out of the pass uh, band, uh, the impedance is very high. Um, so yeah, um, pretty happy and uh, of both filters and uh, for the value of $5, uh, dollars, I think it's very, very good value for the money. So that's, uh, that's all for this episode and um, I see you next time. Bye bye.